Assalamu alaikum. Hope you're doing well. Inshallah, it's time for another story of one of the companions of the Prophet. I think this is a story that a lot of us can resonate with because it is a story of procrastination. Yes, the companions of the Prophet also fell into the things that we fall into today as well. So I hope that we can resonate with the story, inshallah, and learn from it. So the story is going to be about Kab ibn Malik. Kaab was known for his poetry and he was actually chosen by the Prophet وسلم, to be one of three poets who would address uh, people. Because he was eloquent in his speech and was able to communicate well with people, it was kind of like social media of today where these people who had eloquent speech were able to draw audiences uh, to them. So that was how it was back in those days. So he was one of those chosen people. So he was near and dear to the Prophet Sallallahu He is also known for a situation in the Battle of Uhud when the archers left their positions and came down the mountains and disobeyed the Prophet Sallallahu commands. And because of that, the opposing army was able to come from behind and attack the Muslims. And Kaab was the one who exchanged armor with the Prophet Sallallahu so that they would not be able to get to the Prophet and because of that he sustained many wounds on that day but the story that we are going to talk about today is a story of procrastination so let's dive right into what happened and we are going to read the story from his words and how he narrates the story what happened was there was a battle a battle of tabuk okay and Kaab was supposed to attend every muslim man was supposed to attend unless they had a valid excuse like they are old or they're too young or they're sick unhealthy something right then they have a valid excuse now he did not have a valid excuse let's look at what happened so he says the story behind me not attending the battle of tabuk is the following i had never been stronger or more well off at the time, I failed to follow the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that battle. I never even owned two mounts except on the day of that battle. So two animals that he could mount, that he could ride. He never even had two mounts except on that day. So this was the most well-off that he had ever been, the most comfortable, the stronger. He had no reason not to go. He said, despite the extreme heat, the Prophet ﷺ set out for battle. The, des the destination was far and remote, and the enemy was many in numbers. The Prophet ﷺ informed the people of their journey's end and what lay ahead so that they would prepare themselves fully for battle. And indeed, the Muslims who accompanied the Messenger were many. The Prophet set out during the time of year when fruits ripened and people preferred to sit in the shade. So, the Messenger of Allah prepared for battle and the Muslims followed in the Prophet ﷺ's footsteps. Yet, Whenever I went out to purchase my goods for battle, I would return home without completing any of my needs. I would say to myself, there is still time to prepare if I want. I continued to postpone until the people were ready to set out. Okay, I'm sure we can all relate to this. You have a plan for the day, you set out to do certain things, and you just feel like you're going round in circles in that day, and you're getting nothing done, and you're just delaying things, you're so inefficient with your time, and you're just not doing it, anything with your time, you're not getting things done. And then you tell yourself, the next day I'll do it, the next day, and so on, and days and days and days pass, right? So I'm sure we can all relate to this uh, situation. So let's see what happened. After this happening again and again and again, he says, the next morning the Prophet ﷺ decided to begin the journey. And despite the fact that I had not prepared a thing for the trip, I said to myself, I can prepare myself in one or two days and then I'll follow them. The following morning they left Medina. So now they leave. I went out to prepare my belongings, but again I returned home without finishing any of my needs. I continued to delay while the Muslims moved along in their journey. The battle eventually began and it was too late. I had every intention of following them and joining the battle. I wish I had done so, but I did not. Again, I'm sure many of us can relate to this, right? The feeling of wishing, having the intention to do something, but you just don't get it done, right? And, and he says that, you know, whenever he went out, now the Muslims were away, right? All the people that were left, he was so saddened to see that whoever was left were basically the hypocrites who didn't want to go or people who were not capable of going, that were weak, like the old, uh, sick and so on, that actually had valid excuses. So he was so sad to just 
be amongst this group of people. And he says the Prophet وسلم, uh, noticed his absence when they arrived in Tabuk. So the Prophet وسلم, was seated among the companions and then he saw that Ka'ab is missing, right? The Prophet وسلم, was in tune with his people, right? So he knew people and so he recognized that you know, Ka'ab is not here. So he said, what did Ka'ab do? He asked the companions, what did Ka'ab do? Where's Ka'ab, right? A man answered and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, his garments and observance of his worldly goods prevented him from coming. So this man throws Ka'ab under the bus, right? And just completely tells on him and says, oh, the dunya distracted him. So it wasn't the nicest thing, right? And so another companion, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, replies and says, what an evil thing you have spoken. Like, how could you speak like that about our brother, right? What an evil thing you have spoken. And he says, O Messenger of Allah, we have known nothing but good of him. So he stands up now for Ka'ab. He says, we know nothing of good of him. So so probably he has a reason, right? You know, so he's defending now Ka'ab, right? Now the Prophet وسلم, stays silent in this exchange. He just stays quiet. And now finally they are returning. The Muslims are returning from Tabuk. And Ka'ab hears that the Muslims are returning now. So he starts he's really sad he doesn't know what to do he doesn't want to upset the prophet وسلم, and he starts thinking what can i say what excuse can i give and he starts thinking about what lies he can say to get him out of the situation of being a disappointment and having no reason when he he says that when i was told that the messenger of allah وسلم, would soon reach medina the evil disappeared from within me and i realized that nothing but the truth could be my savior so i decided to speak the truth so ultimately, when the Prophet ﷺ is now arriving, he decides, no, I can't lie to him. I have to tell him the truth. I have to tell him that I basically just procrastinated. That was my reason. So the next morning, the Prophet arrives. And the Prophet ﷺ, uh, whenever he would return from a trip, he would go to the masjid, he would pray to rakhaz, and he would sit with the people. So when he sat down with the people, those who stayed behind uh, came to give their excuse for not coming. So there was about 80 men who came now to the Prophet وسلم, to give their excuses for not coming. So one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. And the Prophet وسلم, accepts their excuses. And he asks Allah for uh, their forgiveness. Now, now it's Ka'ab's turn. Ka'ab comes to the Prophet وسلم. He says that the Prophet وسلم, greeted him with a smile, but the smile of one who is upset. You know that type of smile where you see that the person is, is upset. And the Prophet ﷺ tells him, come, come. So he comes closer and he sits in front of the Prophet ﷺ. And then the Prophet ﷺ asks him, why did you stay behind? Did you not acquire a mount? Did you perhaps not have a mount or an, an animal to ride? And then he says, oh, messenger of Allah. By God, if I was seated with anyone besides you and I was among worldly people, I would have relieved myself by presenting an excuse. For I have been endowed with the ability to debate and argue. He's gifted, right? He's eloquent in speech. So if he wants to speak his way out of something, he knows how to, right? He knows how to convince people with his speech. So he says, if it was anybody but you, I would get my way out of this by debating. But nevertheless, by God, I realize that if I lie to you today, just to obtain your pleasure, then he would surely lay your wrath upon me. I also know that if I speak the truth, though it might make you angry with me, I beseech the reward of my Lord. By God, I did not have an excuse. I swear by Allah, I was not stronger and more comfortably well off than the time I remained behind and did not follow you. He says, I had no excuse. I was in the best state, in the best condition. I absolutely had no excuse. Now here, the Prophet وسلم, says, as for him, referring to Ka'ab, as for him, he has spoken the truth. This man now came, he has spoken the truth. The others, we don't know, uh, right? Because we said they're hypocrites, or people are coming with excuses uh, and so on. Not necessarily the truth, right? But he says, as for him, he has spoken the truth. Go until Allah announces his judgment upon you. So he tells him to leave. When he leaves, some people come to him and say, what did you do? Why did you just give an excuse? Why didn't you give an excuse like all the other people? And then it would have been fine. And the Prophet would have asked for forgiveness for you and you would have been done. Why did you do this? You know, And they 
putting thoughts in his head, right? So he's thinking, oh, I need to go back and change what I said and deny what I said and, and give the prophet an excuse. And so now he's, you know, he's thinking, uh, thinking to go back. And then he asks them, he says, has anyone other than me come forward with such? Is there anyone in my state? Has there anyone in the same situation as me? Or does everybody, did everybody give an excuse? So then they told him, yes, actually, there are others. There are two other men that said the same as you. And they were given the same answer. They were given the same answer to go and wait until Allah announces his judgment on you. And he asked who these two men were. And when they told him, he knew these two men, Murar ibn al-Rabi'ah and Hilal ibn Umayyah al-Waqifi, he knows them. He knew that these two men, they were very righteous people. So he stayed quiet and decided he's staying firm with his decision because he's with these two other righteous people. So he stood firm. He didn't go back to the Prophet وسلم, to give him another excuse or to change his mind about what he said. So what happens? The Prophet وسلم, forbids people to talk to these three men until Allah's judgment comes, until something happens, right? They are forbidden to talk to these three men. They need to leave these three men alone. So the people avoided speaking to them, changed their treatment towards them. He says to the extent that I hated myself. Nobody would talk to me. Nobody would communicate with me. I would talk, not get a response. It was like he didn't exist. They would just ignore him. And subhanAllah, this went on day, another day, another day, another day. He was still going to the masjid, going to the market, going around, but nobody would talk to him. And he would even go and still attend the Prophet Wasallam sessions. And he would greet the Prophet وسلم, and he wouldn't get a response. And sometimes he would he would look and say, oh, that I see the Prophet's lips moving. Perhaps he responded to me. You know, he was questioning. Did I see something? Did I see a reaction? Did I see the Prophet glance at me? He, he feels a glance. He turns to, to look and the Prophet وسلم, looks away. And, you know, you can imagine that the feeling, the state, he loves the Prophet. وسلم, but he's getting no acknowledgement from him and he's trying trying to steal a glance even a response to a salam something right i mean it was painful right to go through and this was part of this test that he went through to really test his faith him and these two other people now what happens 40 day, 40 nights pass 40 nights pass four zero and then someone comes to tell him you need to leave your wife and he says like divorce her and they say no just be separate from her so now even from your spouse you need to uh, be distanced so not only are the people distancing themselves from you but now even your spouse you need to distance uh, yourself so the so his wife went to her family's home uh, after the 40th night when this when this decision came so again he's really tested right he's really alone and subhanAllah, even through these days, a king from another land sends a message, sends a letter to him saying that we heard that your leader forsake you, so come come join us, come join our community, right? A community of disbelievers. So they were trying to get him out of uh, Islam. And subhanAllah, even that, when he read this letter, he knew this is another test. I need to stand firm in my faith. And he takes the letter and he throws it in an oven and, and burns it. And he says, this is another test. It's a test. Okay, so now the wife leaves him and another 10 days pass. Now we are on the 50th day. He hears a voice, someone calling out to him, Kaab, Kaab, rejoice, rejoice, good news, good news. And he knew. When he heard that person calling, telling him, rejoice, rejoice, celebrate, good news, he immediately fell into sujood, a sujood of just utmost relief a sujood of complete relief so he falls into prostration and he knows relief has come the prophet وسلم, after offering fajr prayer that day had announced to the people after the fajr prayer that allah has sent forgiveness for these three people allah has forgiven them so the people are rushing to congratulate these three people he is going to the masjid. People are congratulating him. And he goes to see the Prophet Sallallahu You know, finally, finally the day has come, right? It was very difficult for him, very difficult for him to go through that. And it was part of the test of his faith. And he goes to see the Prophet Sallallahu And he says that when I greeted the Prophet Sallallahu his face was glowing, so happy, smiling, so happy. Not the smile of disappointment or sadness like earlier. It was a complete 
happy smile at Kaab. Now imagine this, finally the Prophet ﷺ is acknowledging him, right? For the past how many weeks he was just not acknowledged, not recognized, and now the Prophet ﷺ is smiling at him. And the Prophet ﷺ tells him, be delighted for today is the best day you have ever had since the day your mother gave birth to you. So you are completely in a state of purity, like the day that your mother gave birth to you. So not only does he give him good news, subhanAllah, of you know, him being forgiven for this one moment, but he gives him good news that this is the best day that you've ever had because you're completely, it's like a clean slate for you, that your faith was tested and you passed, you passed these tests, right? You were put through hardship, you passed. But Ka'ab had one question for the Prophet ﷺ. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, is this forgiveness from you or is it from Allah? He needed to know. And the Prophet ﷺ said, it is from Allah. And so he grabbed the Prophet ﷺ's hand and kissed him and he was so happy. Finish. That was it. That was the relief that he needed, right? He was forgiven by Allah. That's what he needed. That's what he wanted. And he vowed that he would forever tell the truth after this moment. So that is the story of Ikab. SubhanAllah, there's so many lessons from this story. I know that we can probably all relate to procrastination and not getting things done. And SubhanAllah, it's also a reminder that even those people that are close to the Prophet Wasallam, they fell into the same things that we fall into nowadays, right? Sometimes we think that, oh, it would be easier for us if we had the Prophet Wasallam right in front of us and if we were amongst his companions, right? We would be much better people and so on. But we can still fall into the same things, right? Even if we have the Prophet ﷺ amongst us. And we see this through the story of Ka'b ibn Malik. They were humans, you know? They were just like us. So they had different moments like us, you know? So procrastination got him and it taught him a big lesson. I hope, uh, inshallah, that you enjoyed this little story, a little insight into Ka'b ibn Malik and took some takeaways, inshallah, from this. And with that, inshallah, we conclude. Assalamu alaikum.